Do I go ahead with this? This is the high school data. Uh, we took uh, the fall test in September, and then we took the spring test in May. Oops. And this kind of just takes you through uh, the 9th, 10th, 11th grade students. Uh, for the 9th grade, um, average fluency is 127 words per minute in the spring, it went up to 135. Average comprehension was 3.5 questions missed in the fall and two questions missed in the spring. Um, for fluency in the fall, we had 51 students that met the goal of 113 words per minute and 25 students did not meet that fluency goal. Um, in the spring, again, those 56 students met the goal of 113 words per minute, 20 students did not although 18 of those 20 students increased their fluency but not meet the goal. So there was some growth there, they just didn't reach that point. Um, for the comprehension, which is always, for the high school anyway, you're, always, you, you're, you're looking at fluency, yes, but at the same time, you're, you're, you know, what are they taking <coughs> out of this particular passage? In the fall, seven, 61 out of 76 kids did not meet the goal, missing 0 to 1.5 questions. Um, in the spring, 46 out of 76 did not meet the goal. So it got better, obviously still not where you want it to be. And if you kind of break that down and include this in your data, but if you want to go male, female, 17 boys of that 46 uh, did not meet the goal and 29 girls did not meet the goal. Um, I did include on the comprehension piece that 6, 1, 1, 1, and 1 that's what the 10 questions are based on. Of those 10 questions, six are fact questions. One is a theme question. In fact, on this one, the theme was, what is this passage about? There's a typical question that they would ask. You know, there's your theme, and then that, that student orally comes back with some type of answer as to what the theme was. Then there was an interpretation question, uh, then one evaluation question, one vocabulary question. That made up the 10 the 10 total questions on the VRI as well. Um, for the 10th grade, <coughs> excuse me, uh, fall fluency was 132, spring was 146, comprehension, three questions missed, spring, two missed. Um, the fluency again, 59 out of 77 met the goal, and the spring, 69 out of 77 met the goal. Uh, and then eight, the eight students did not, did not, all eight students increased their fluency, but again did not reach that particular goal. Uh, and then comprehension, uh, in the fall, 54 out of 77 did not meet the goal of missing 0 to 1.5 questions. In the spring, 38 out of 77 did not meet the goal of missing 0 to 1.5, or 0 to 1.5 questions. Again, male-female breakdown, um, 18 boys uh, of that 38, and then 20 girls. And then for the 11th grade on that next page, uh, fall fluency 129, spring 134, um, comprehension 2.5 mess, and this one, there was three mess, so the comprehension actually uh, got worse. Senior I just kicked in. <laughs> May, I don't know what it was. Sometimes it's a passage, uh, it's hard to say, you know, um, but. Uh, yeah, and that's what we, where you take a look at what question are they missing on that particular piece of that. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then in the fall, um, the fluency 64 out of 79, 79 students met the goal. Uh, spring 66 out of 79 students met the goal. Uh, 13 students did not meet the goal. Only three of the 13 improved the fluency. So that, that's a red flag right there for us to say, okay, how did we regress in this particular point? And then nine actually got worse and one stayed the same. So then you're breaking down who those individuals are and where we need to do for interventions and things such as that. Uh, comprehension, 57 out of 79 students did not meet the goal of missing 0 to 1.5. In the spring, 56 out of 79 did not meet the goal, so we improved by one student. Uh, doesn't mean that one particular thing. But, and then in this case, it was 28 boys and 28 girls. We just split you right down the middle of that 56. Uh, what we use this with in regards to, to the, the high school 
is uh, indicative of our second chance reading. Students that we need to, to uh, continue to have in our second chance reading class where they're working on reading fluency and reading comprehension strategies. Uh, that's real. We started that last year, and so how much of <coughs> last year's second chance reading uh, impacted these scores? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, give us some time and then you can establish some, some trend data on that particular uh, thing. Um, one question that comes up is how do you miss half a question? You know, how do you miss 1.5 out of 10 questions? Uh, when the test administrator is going through and they're listening to that student answer back orally, they've got in front of them a list of kind of accessible questions. And uh, for, I'll give you an example of one where a kid missed a half. Uh, according to the passage, what are the symptoms of low blood glucose levels? And they put down, uh, you feel tired, irritable, unhappy, they want to. Well, this do, well, they said according to the passage, what are the symptoms? Well, the student just gave the one, so they missed a half a point in that particular thing. Okay, that's pretty much the half a point. So. Um, sometimes you hear the word is kind of a half-baked answer. Uh, they kind of got it, but they didn't just nail it, so that's what they call them as a half-baked you know. um, And that's, that's where you've got uh, your test administrator. In fact, for us in the spring, our test administrator was reviewing with our at-risk coordinator. Um, so it kind of fits into what she does with kids as well. Any questions in the high school here? Yeah. <coughs> um, when I see this, I start thinking about attitude. And you've been there, and, and when I see this at the special at the junior level, I begin to wonder if your feeling is what my feeling is about they are saying, oh, do we have to take this again? Yeah. And when I see that you're in the, basically you're better than 50% that did not meet the goal of missing, you know, I thought, oh my goodness. And then I see that at the sophomore, over half in comprehension. <coughs> Am I right in thinking that? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, in some cases, yes. Yeah. Uh, when I talked to Teresa after the, the test, what I asked her to do is she did each individual test. Uh, she took uh, copious notes about what each kid was doing. So we've got some actual individual kid data there, too, that we can go over and look at. Do you get an attitude sometimes? Yeah, most certainly. You get a kid that just doesn't want to try real hard. But with Teresa, one of the reasons we, we use Teresa was she kind of has a good relationship with kids, and, and she felt that the kid that she had that took this test with her uh, did gave us their best effort. Um, we do have some struggle leaders at the junior level. I wouldn't, I don't, don't. Uh, well, that sort of shows. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, what she would come back and she, she said, you know, because she doesn't have all those kids, obviously, within the context of the class. She just, well, I cannot imagine trying to read Romeo and Juliet or something like that and having, uh, being a struggling reader. I mean, she goes, I had a hard time just concentrating because the kid is reading, like, you know, here is the, you know, that type of a, of a, of a fluency with that and how difficult it must be. And she said, some kids, they just get so frustrated. This is at the high school level. You know, that they just get so frustrated with it, you could just tell they were shutting down and they couldn't remember what they'd read just three words ago. And then to go back to the comprehension, then. But that's where schools need to have the intervention because it is what it is. And, and uh, we've got some strategies we need to be using. Uh, there's an interesting book that I'm reading talking about dealing with, with boys. When I broke down the girls and boys data, you know, the, the statistics always say, you know, girls do better in English and boys do better in math and science. So I kind of thought it'd be more heavy on the boys' side of this, that there'd be more kids, more boys not being the goal, and that wasn't the case in this point. But, but there's still, this book that talks about struggling readers still talks about what are some strategies that we can do, and we can incorporate that into our professional development this year. Because um, that is our goal, again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to be that goal. Is, Comprehension. What are some strategies we need to input? What are teachers, you know, what do teachers need to do to assist students uh, with the comprehension piece?